Hello and welcome to a very special How I Paint Things. Now yesterday I promised I was going to paint something just for me, for no reason other than I thought it would be fun. So what I've got in front of me is a super mutant. Now this fella here, he is a 3D print. Uh, he comes from Imitation of Life Miniatures, and I'll make sure that there's a link to their My Mini Factory page in the description. Uh, you can also get physical miniatures printed from these, and there are of course other places you can find super mutants. Um, I've had this guy printed for probably more than a year, and he has been sitting, primed, waiting for some attention. And I never really thought he would be relevant, let's say, to the channel. So he just languished, despite me really wanting to paint him. So today, that's what I'm going to do. And I'm painting him just for me. So the method here is going to be pretty basic, to be perfectly honest, but there might be one or two things that you find interesting. So all of the paints for this will be listed in the description below, along with the recipe for the base. Let's get started. So first off, we have our Super Mutant. Now he's been printed and assembled. There's a few parts to him, not very many. And I've then given him a primer spray of Zandri dust. Uh, you'll see I have played around a little bit here with a wash um, months ago now, but it's not going to affect how we paint him. Um, I like using Xandri Dust because it's got a nice grimy sort of color to it, and anywhere that I might miss with the brush, once this is shaded, if there's a bit which is a little bit brown and grimy somewhere, it's going to fit in just fine with the rest of the look. Now the real challenge here is going to be keeping all of this dude in focus as I try and paint him, so uh, bear with me for this one. Now because he is such a busy miniature, there's an awful lot going on here. The easiest way to tackle them, I think, is going to be to start from the bottom and work our way up, which, same as always, is going to mean starting with the skin. I'm going to try Warg Flesh. Um, I'm not 100% certain quite how super mutant this is. It might look a little bit dark once I've shaded it, uh, but that's why we can highlight. So we'll jam it on his face. I'm going to get right into the back of his mouth there too. Um, and anywhere else where skin is visible. So I'm not too worried if I hit his leg wraps or his, you know, these little bits of armor on his feet. It's not going to matter. I just want to make his skin green. And in some places, good old wild flesh, I will probably need to give it a second coat. Now, like I thought, in a couple of areas, I did need to come back and give that two coats. Uh, it's going to be way darker than I had in mind, though. Um, it's a good base coat. But it's not going to suit my purposes. So what I've got is Sons of Horus Green, which is kind of a greyish tint. Uh, and I've got a flat brush. What I'm going to do is actually quite liberally sort of overbrush this. I don't mind if I leave a little bit of the wag flesh in the recesses. Uh, but I want to brighten up the skin tone just a bit. Introduce a little bit of that bluish grey tint, uh, which is more emblematic, I think, of the super mutants. So here you see, I'm just going to blap his abs quite quickly. Uh, doesn't need to be perfect. This is just to change up the skin tone a little. And yeah, it's nice and quick. I'm still not sure if that's quite the shade of green I'm looking for, but we'll see how it looks once we get a bit of brown on here. What I've got is Rakarth Flesh now, and I'm going to use this for any bits of just stray cloth like the ties around his arms, Oop. and on his foot down here as well. Uh, you can be quite quite brutal with this. Uh, you'll notice I'm using a synthetic brush for most of this because it's not going to matter too much if I beat the dickens out of it. Basically, uh, you can really get quite violent jabbing it in there where you need it to go. Now I tend to find that Rakarth Flesh will cover very well over Zandri Dust, um, if you do have to go over any of the green areas you might have splashed over earlier, um, it will take a second coat. It's a nice quick step, that. Now we're going to move up to his clothing, and I have here Demonette Hide, because honestly, how do you not? So, nice purple shorts, because of course, uh, but <laughs> any color at all, of course, will work here. Um, you can dress your super mutant as you like. Now, what huge green dude isn't improved by purple pants? Now, there's this next bit of clothing, which is uh, the lowest level. It looks kind of like a burlap sack, if I flip him up this way, which he's just thrown over his shoulders and had stitched together. 
Now thinking about what color to paint this, because he's got these uh, signs, this license plate thing on his chest, if I add another color to the miniature, it's going to start getting really busy very quickly. It's going to look like an explosion in a flag factory, and I want to avoid that. So I've got Steel Legion Drab instead, and we're going to paint the top section fairly, well, drab, I suppose is the word. Uh, beautiful thing, same as most of the other base colors so far. This will cover very easily over Xandri Dust. So slowing down a little, not very much, as you'll see as I get near the skin. Um, for most of this, you do not need to be tidy at all. Just blast through it, enjoy the process, and trust that if you make a mistake, don't worry about it. We can just go back later and tidy it up. Now as well as this stuff, there's also lots of furry fluffy bits around the miniature. Now for this I'm going to use XV88. This is a really nice color for natural, um, you know, realistic looking bits of fluff basically. And uh, I'm sticking to my synthetic brush still, haven't really changed anything, uh, just so that I can be quite violent, really jam it into those recesses. Um, by the time we shade that, you're probably not going to need to worry too much about getting right into there, but uh, why, why not give it a shot? Now still working up, layer by layer, we're going to move on to the leather details for most of these bits. What I've got is Mornfang Brown. Now in some areas, you might be tempted to swap it up for a different color, like particularly on the haft of his hammer here. Um, I'm not going to, personally, because there's going to be plenty of color on this dude already. Like, he is going to look like an absolute riot. Uh, I don't think it's necessary to distract the eye, as it were, by adding more, <laughs> more color than there needs to be. So underneath these chains that are keeping, I want to say clothing, I don't know if that's the word, but uh, underneath there there's a strap of leather, so try not to miss that. And this bit... There we go. This bit around his wrist here, I'm just going to blast the whole thing in Mornfang Brown. Now the teddy that's on his belt here, I'm going to touch up with Xandri Dust. Uh, pouches and things like that, like this one here, I'm also going to touch up with a little bit of this, because I think we don't need to add a huge amount to what's going on around his waist. So just a wee blast of that. Now we're starting to make it a little bit further up the miniature. We can start painting in these uh, shields on his chest. So the license plate, um, I'm assuming he's in America, so I'm going to paint this one yellow. This is Avalanche Sunset. Uh, now I say I assume he's in America because the next shield is you know, clearly US road sign. So uh, I'm just going to go with what looks right for the states. For some states. I know that different states have different license plates. Nobody... Nobody yell at me. <laughs> and then, thinking about how much color is on him already, I'm going to use Corax White to paint in the highway sign. Now, you could do this with a red and blue, um, but I think the white is going to give us a great big target on his chest, first of all. You see what I mean about him starting to look really colorful. Uh, I almost forgot his hammer, but luckily I have some Mechanicus Standard Gray, and I am going to paint in... What I'm assuming is a huge cinder block. Now for the walloping great tire on his shoulder, I'm going to swap to Vallejo's German Grey. This is a really nice, very faintly bluish black, and uh, covers like an absolute dream, which is why I'm using it. Uh, the closest equivalent to this would be something like Corvus Black from Citadel. Uh, but if you can pick up your Vallejo line, either online or you've got a local retailer, uh, German Grey is... that's a no-brainer. Definitely go pick that one up. Now it's starting to feel like we're getting somewhere. What I have is Mephiston Red, and this section up on his uh, shoulder here, and as well this panel on his leg. I want to paint these looking like they've come off a car or something. Um, I'm kind of getting like a, a truck vibe, but something... I do want a bright color at last, so let's jam this on here. Okay, here at last comes the fun part, and I say that with big inverted commas. What I have here is Lead Belcher, and a jet flying overhead. I'm going to use this to paint in all of the metallic details that I have left. 
The idea here is that this is going to kind of frame and encapsulate everything else that we've done so far. Like there is a huge amount of this grubby silver, uh, which I think framing it is the right way to look at it. This is going to bring a lot of this together and uh, make the miniature look a little bit more, shall we say, controlled. Uh, now this bit's going to take probably the longest uh, because there's quite a bit of metal on him. Uh, but if I make any mistakes, I've still got all of my base coats there. Won't take too long to fix up. Now, as well as the metallic details, I also went over some of the red, uh, just in big chunky strips to make it look like it had been dinged up a little bit. Once that's shaded, that's going to come together much more nicely. The last thing to do really are just a couple of finishing touches now. So I have more gassed bone and I'm going to use this over the bone. Um, I'm also going to paint in his teeth with this. It's a very quick strip there. And uh, if you're feeling daring, you can also blast in his toenails with this. Mm. Once that Morgast bone was on, I went back with a little bit of Korax white into his eyes and just some of his teeth. Um, quickly painted those off screen because I can never quite do it in front of the camera. What I have now is corn red for his tongue, although you could just as easily dab in a little bit of Mephiston red. Um, I'm just in the realm of having fun with it now. <laughs> Now I'll go back to some fresh Rakarth flesh, and I'm going to touch in the stitching on his face here, and also on the back of his clothes. And then at last, the final thing I'm going to do before I go ahead and shade him is to use some black to tidy in the edges of these shields. And uh, also to write on them. Now I'm using here Vallejo's black for the same reason that I used... Uh, German grey earlier, and it's just the coverage is much better. So, taking my time here. And yeah, this will be the last step at last before we shade him. Now, once you finish with that, that is all of the base coats done, so it's time to shade him. What I'm going to use here this is Umber Wash from Vallejo, the game color range. Uh, this stuff is magic. What I'm going to do is load my brush up, and I'll start from the back here. I'll start from his back, and just start really quickly working it pretty much everywhere. Make sure that you are jamming it into any recesses. Don't let it puddle too much. Uh, but once it's had a couple of seconds to settle, you'll see uh, it does interesting things. So, starting from the top, and I'm going to work quite quickly here. Let's cover the entire miniature in Umber Wash. Now, isn't that magic? Doesn't that make all the world of difference? What I tend to find with the Umber Wash is that it settles into the cracks and crevices and makes quite a visible brown tint in there. Uh, so if you've missed any gaps, um, it will basically paint them in for you with that brown. I love it. A uh, really brilliant wash to have, uh, so definitely pick that up if you can get your grubby little mitts on it. And the only thing I'm really going to highlight, I've got one or two other bits I want to do, but the important bit is going to be the skin. I thought I could get away without mixing anything here, uh, but nothing was quite the right shade. So what I've got, let's uh, stop that wiggling. So what I've got here is Sons of Horus Green and Nurgling Green, and I've started with... Three parts Sons of Horus to one part Nurgling Green. And Nurgling Green I've chosen because it's not a very, uh, what's the word, saturated, strong green itself. Um, and I think it's going to work fine for most of this. Yeah. So what I'm going to do is highlight the skin. Nice and quick about this. Um, I don't need to be particularly careful. He, he's so big, you can't really miss some of these details uh, but yeah let's come back in a minute once i've done this and then i've added in a little dollop more of nurgling green and uh, i'm going to now highlight them a little bit more like i would an ordinary face just picking out his lips his chin his brows and such and i'll also use a little bit of this on the backs of places like his knuckles and his toes there's my happy little boy. <laughs> what I'm going to do now, 
I've got one of my grungy little makeup brushes and some Tyrant Skull, and I'm going to get most of this off of the brush. I'm going to use this to dry brush the fur, uh, some of the, what do you call it, the leg wraps and what have you. And then when I'm leaving practically nothing behind on those details, what I can do is actually use this to catch uh, some of the other bits, like the tire even, you know, a little faint whisper of Tyrant's skull has a good sort of road dust look to it. Um, even the stone on the, or the concrete rather, on his hammer, pretty much anything that isn't the skin um, or the metal stuff. You can have a bit of fun with this. Just a tiny wee whisper of Tyrant's skull. So go easy. And uh, this is definitely one to have a bit of a practice with. If you are very, very light with your dry brush, you've got practically nothing in your brush, what you're doing isn't so much putting a line of Tyrant Skull on there, you kind of, it's almost a translucent layer. So the color underneath is still going to show through. So despite there being a yellowish tint to it, the edge essentially on the trousers has a little bit of that purple showing through. And that works super well. So people say all the time, ah, dry brushing, you know, just edge highlight it. Nah, practice your dry brushing because for speed, I find it, you know, it's really useful. Now at this point, the very last stage I'm going to do is to go ahead and highlight some of the metal work. And for this, what I'm going to use is steel. This is a Vallejo model air color and it is super bright. Uh, I just like how it comes off a brush. A little bit of this, some of the areas that you want to shine a little bit more, go ahead with it now. Once I'm finished with this, I'm going to go ahead and very quickly base this dude. I'll pop the recipe for that in the description, just the same as always, and let's get a look at what he looks like. And he is all finished. And there at last, our super mutant is complete. And I can't say, really, what a nice change of pace it was being to, to paint something just for the sake of doing it. This fellow's probably going to see some use on the table when I'm playing Majestic 13, or five clicks from the zone. There's, there's a bunch of games that, you know, a super mutant looking baddie will fit in just fine. There's also, of course, Fallout Wasteland Warfare. So if you've got that and you've got super mutant faction, well, here's one way you can paint those guys. I'm not 100% certain I got the skin tone quite the way I would have wanted, but I am still pleased with how it turned out, so I'll, I'll take that. It's a learning experience. It's half the point in putting paint on a miniature. So if you sat through that and you enjoyed that, thank you very much for sticking around. I really do appreciate it. As well, thank you very much to Exit23 Games for the light and sound equipment, as well as all of the wonderful patrons who are keeping me ticking in my paints and glue including my wonderful producers who are showing up on screen now. Your support means the world, folks. Any questions or anything, feel free to drop them in the old comment box below. My Twitter and Instagram are both linked down there too. So thank you very much again for your time, everyone, and you all enjoy the rest of your day.